Bill Griff, for more on this closely watched election, we are joined by Republican Congressman from Virginia and member of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, Morgan Griffith. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to be with you. Thank you. You too. Want to get to, want to talk to you first about the big event in your state on Tuesday. The governor's race has been really turned on its head there. Let's pull up the latest Fox News poll, which our reporter Alexandria just showed us. It shows Glenn Youngkin with an eight point comfortable lead over Terry McAuliffe. Of course, there are other polls that show the race tighter, but let me get your reaction uh, to our poll. Well, I mean, I would be thrilled if it was eight points, but I'm going to be very, very happy when Glenn Youngkin wins. I don't care whether it's one point or eight points. We want to win. And look, Terry McAuliffe's run a poor campaign. His theme has been, uh, I'm not Glenn Youngkin and Glenn Youngkin is Donald Trump. That doesn't win elections. Uh, Glenn Youngkin's been out there campaigning on education, making sure parents are involved in education. He's been talking about jobs and issues across the Commonwealth, and he's been working harder than Terry McAuliffe. Terry McAuliffe had his famous bus come through uh, the northern part of my deep uh, southwest Virginia district, but he wasn't on it. And I will tell you that Glenn Youngkin was here the next day, and Glenn Youngkin's going to be here tomorrow, and Glenn Youngkin's going to be here on Monday. So he is crisscrossing the state. He's working hard. He has the energy necessary to win, and he's going to win on Tuesday. Yeah, it is really interesting because Terry McAuliffe is such a seasoned politician, and here comes Glenn Youngkin, a political novice, uh, and he really seems comfortable out there as a political candidate. But let me ask you, uh, what changed in this race? As you mentioned, there is a lot of uh, GOP enthusiasm, and because the race is largely focused on education and critical race theory, it does seem to have energized Republicans, 79% of Youngkin supporters are extremely interested in the election compared to only 69% of McAuliffe supporters. What do you make of that? Well, I think that's that's true. And I think McAuliffe is responsible for that. When he said that parents shouldn't be involved in their students' educations, he got a lot of Democrats. I'm not going to say it's, it's 10 points, but a few points of Democrats are actually going to vote for Youngkin because even though they lean to the left, they believe they have a right to be involved in their children's education and that when they ought to be able to go to school boards with whatever the issue is and be heard. Yeah, that really did seem like a turning point in the race. Um, I want to turn quickly to another topic while we've got you, the big spending bill that is likely to come up for a vote next week. You have been tweeting about this, how you got 1,700 pages sort of handed on your desk, dumped on your desk last week. Did you get through enough pages uh, to figure out whether you like the deal or not? They did cut it down from $3.5 trillion to $1.75 trillion. Uh, what do you think so far? Well, I've, I've been able to get through about 200, 250 pages uh, thus far. The rest of it's sitting here at, on the table with me. Uh, I'm going to keep reading through it, but I will tell you, I can't vote for it. There are a number of reasons why. One, they lowered the number in part by just playing some gimmicks, by saying, okay, instead of funding it for 10 years, we're only going to fund it for three years or two years. Uh, that's not acceptable. They really want to continue those programs out for the full 10 years, but they wanted to bring the number down. The other thing is there's no hide protections built in here. Uh, that's another big problem. And, and there are other problems. Natural gas tax uh, is in there. It's going to raise the cost of, uh, of heating uh, people's homes. Uh, they've got uh, all kinds of, you know, you can be making like $800,000 and still get a tax benefit for buying a new electric car. And that's all fine and good, except the people in my district can't afford that mm. because our average household, our household median income is just a few thousand dollars more than a low end electric car. So, you know, they're they're ignoring uh, people who have uh, less economic uh, wherewithal within their districts and catering to the rich. Let's go over quickly where most of the money would be going when we have a graphic to put up. Uh, there's $550 billion to clean energy and climate investments, $400 billion for child care and universal pre-K for three and four year olds, and $200 billion to extending the early child tax credit. Um, so what do you think about that? I know you said you're not going to vote for it, but what about your colleagues? Do you think this is going to pass if it comes up to, for a vote next week? Well, that depends on the uh, the Democrat caucus. If they have a un unified caucus, it'll probably pass. If they have dissenters, it probably won't. There will be a few Republicans, I would guess, who would vote for it. And look, there are some good things in there. Even in the pages that I've been able to read, I've seen a couple things. I'm like, yeah, if that was a standalone bill, I could probably vote for that. But when you take the total package, I don't think it's going to get very many votes on the Republican side. The question is, how many votes does it get on the Democrat side? 
Well, we'll have to see. Uh, looks like it could, uh, could come for a vote next week. We're all going to be watching that. Congressman, thank you so much for your time today, and uh, we'll see you again.